To better illustrate the concept of piston ring leakage, let's observe the piston movement during a compression stroke as depicted here. This leakage allows gas from the compression chamber to escape past the piston into the other end of the cylinder, which is taken suction with the inlet valve open. Capacity is therefore reduced because this hot leakage gas heats up the incoming gas in that end of the cylinder. Naturally, maximum piston leakage occurs as the piston approaches the end of its stroke because differential pressure across the rings are the greatest at this point. This leakage causes both a volumetric and a horsepower loss, in addition, of course, to an increase in discharge temperature. The concept of piston ring leakage will be rediscussed in detail in the mechanical design section of this course. Valve slip means reversed gas flow through the valves before they have had time to seat at the end of the piston stroke. Obviously, this volume loss can occur through both intake and discharge valves. The minimum slippage occurs in a responsive valve, one that has minimum inertia so that the moving element can easily be controlled by gas flow. We will see this in detail further ahead. For now, keep in mind that slippage is usually much less through intake valves than through discharge valves. Why is that? Because in the discharge valves, differential pressure across the valve increases rapidly as the piston reaches dead center, so that if the valve does not respond instantaneously, high pressure gas naturally returns through the valve before it seats. Now again, these concepts concerning compressor valves will be discussed in detail in a separate section dedicated to valves. Multistaging has an important effect on volumetric efficiency. Here, the low pressure cylinder largely determines the entire machine's volumetric efficiency. Why is that? Because whatever volume this cylinder delivers to succeeding stages must be discharged, with the exception of slight leakage that occurs through the packing. In other words, volumetric efficiency of a two-stage machine is the same as if the low pressure cylinder were a single stage compressor delivering gas at intercooler pressure. In a reciprocating compressor, all cylinders are commonly combined into one unit assembly and driven from a single crankshaft. We will see this in detail in the mechanical design section further ahead. For now, keep in mind that for reciprocating compressors, Multistaging is used to save power, to limit gas discharge temperature, and to limit pressure differential. Because there is intercooling between stages, there is a reduction in the maximum gas discharge temperature. Limitation of maximum discharge temperature is particularly important for safety when holding air in large, high-pressure compressors, where distortion of cylinder parts may be a problem. This is true even though the gas may not become more hazardous when heated. The limitations imposed by high pressure differentials involve avoidance of stress in the frame, running gear, and other parts of the reciprocating compressor. This is actually a complex question to which design engineers must give thorough consideration. A problem of this nature is sometimes solved by increasing the number of compression stages. The following figure shows the theoretical effect of two and three staging on the discharge temperature per stage. In this figure, the compressors are handling normal air at 14.7 psi suction pressure. The data are of course theoretical, with intercooling to suction temperature between stages, 
and equal ratios for all stages and are based on 70 degrees Fahrenheit suction temperature. From this figure and for a discharge pressure, let's say of 100 psi, you can see that a single stage compressor will raise the temperature of air to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, while a two-stage compressor to 250 degrees Fahrenheit and a three-stage compressor to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This shows the importance of multi-staging in limiting the gas discharge temperature. The next figure that you can see here shows the effect of multi-staging on power requirements. Here again, power savings are obvious. Let's consider once again that the discharge pressure is 100 psi and compare the power saving from a single stage to a double stage compressor. As you can see here, the horsepower decreased from roughly 17 to 15 horsepower per 100 cubic feet per minute. Now, using the curve that you can see here, this represents a saving in power of roughly 13%. This is of course a huge saving, especially when the compressor power cost is evaluated during a whole year of operation. Now, the importance to be placed upon power savings in compressor selection will depend to a large extent upon load factor, which is the percentage of total time a compressor actually operates, and also will depend on the size of the compressor. In actual industrial practice, when compression stages exceed 4, power savings are frequently slight through adding a fifth stage, because of the greater gas friction losses through valves, piping, and coolers. There are often other practical advantages, however. The desirability of imposing a maximum temperature limitation is not always fully appreciated. This applies particularly to air compressors where oxidizing atmosphere exists and where lubricating oil decomposition accelerates as temperatures rise. Actual discharge temperature will vary to some degree from the theoretical adiabatic, depending upon compressor size, design, method of cooling, and compression ratio. No rules can be set, but the deviation is not apt to be serious, and the theoretical limitation is an excellent guide. So, as a rule of thumb and a guideline for you, for reciprocating compressors, handling air, or any other oxidizing gas, the maximum discharge temperature should not exceed 300 degrees Fahrenheit. If you happen to work on multi-stage reciprocating compressor, then you should know that actual interstage pressure readings are valuable indicators of the relative tightness of valves and piston rings and should be checked several times daily. Any variation from normal operating pressure is cause for immediate concern and investigation. Since cylinder sizes for any multi-stage reciprocating compressor are proportioned for definite intake and discharge temperature and pressure conditions, variations from design first stage inlet pressure and temperature as well as changes in final discharge pressure and in cooling water temperature will cause interstage pressures to vary slightly. In some cases, theoretical approximations are helpful. You can actually use the following two equations for your two-stage and three-stage reciprocating compressors. Just keep in mind that because of variation in cylinder proportions and clearances in an actual compressor, the theoretical approach with its equal compression ratios per stage cannot be considered to be completely accurate. Actual readings from the specific machine when in good condition and operating at design conditions, should be considered the standard for reference.
the altitude at which a compressor is installed must always be given consideration. As altitude above sea level increases, the weight of the Earth's atmosphere decreases. This is reflected in the absolute intake pressure, which decreases with altitude. This fact is well understood and allowed for with process compressors. At higher altitudes, the low pressure cylinder size is increased to provide greater inlet capacity and to bring the power imposed on the frame and running gear closer to normal values. And as we have seen in a previous video, single-stage reciprocating compressors are limited somewhat by the allowable compression ratio and discharge temperature. Frequently, they must be materially derated for altitude operation. Now, although the power required by a given reciprocating compressor decreases as the altitude increases, the ability of engines and electric motors to safely develop this power usually decreases even more rapidly. Reciprocating compressors are calculated on the basis of theoretical adiabatic horsepower, modified by compression and mechanical efficiencies, which result in the brake horsepower. Compression efficiency depends on many factors, such as effectiveness of valving, compression ratio, gas composition, and compressor size, just to name a few. Mechanical efficiency varies with machine type and size. For preliminary estimation of sea level air compressors for general power services, the data shown in the following figure are reasonable, but subject to confirmation by your manufacturer. Information here is based on 100 actual cubic feet per minute of delivered intake air. For altitude installation, the performance will differ, as we have discussed in a previous video. The next figure that you can see here on the right gives approximate altitude correction factors for the brake horsepower. These figures, as well as all the other figures we have seen so far, are available in the downloadable resource section.